you very much. Good afternoon. You know, it has been said that no man is, no man is an island. And if you take a moment to think about this, that notion stands true, especially today, thanks to the internet. Now, this network, this vast network of information has provided us with things that we use every day, like almost every day, if not every day, such as social networks, search engines, and last but not least, massive open online courses, which come uh, with a license stating they're fully available to use for whoever wants to use them. They are, they are taught by prestigious universities. They're occasionally taught by prestigious universities such as Stanford, MIT, Harvard, and so on. And they are, of course, aimed towards primarily English-speaking uh, students. Now, this year, I had the privilege of taking Harvard's CS50X online, as well as a very eye-opening on-campus course this summer taught by Professor Thiru. Of course, I do realize that this is a privilege that most non-native English and non-native English speakers do not have. Even if we were to make the assumption that 50% of the country's population speaks a certain language, what about the other 50%, which mostly comprises of people who never had the chance to have access to quality English education because of the circumstances of their upbringing? The answer is, they get left behind. But do we really want these people to get left behind without at least one chance at having access to knowledge? There is a Greek word that most of you may know, since you're a mostly Greek audience, it's philotimo. It has many meanings. It does not have one concrete definition. And one of these meanings is solidarity. And in this case, we have to showcase some kind of linguistic solidarity so these people, these bright people who were so unfairly left behind, do not stay behind. Just like in any other problem, it's a sentiment that asks us, why should we solve it? But it's really just reason that tells us how to do it. We have to combine both of these and think outside of the box. Now, this is an Arduino microcontroller, and it is often used into educational workshops. And last year, I had the privilege of being an educator of one of these an instructor one of these. And really, what really caught my attention was that nobody was actually bored. For the first time in my life and in my career as a friend, nobody was bored when I was explaining something to them. Now, if you take a look at this, this, just like any other piece of hardware, only has the capacity of understanding zeros and ones, a string of numbers. Even though it's the epitome of what we call modern technology, it will never truly grasp the complexity of science or the beauty of nature or the beauty of poetry, even though that's kind of ironic since uh, the word poetry comes from the Greek verb pio pio, which means to make. And this is all about making. When you task a student to create to breathe life into a soulless piece of hardware, they can give it, even temporarily, they can give it the ability to sense temperature, pressure, motion. It shows them a whole new world when it comes to approaching what they learn instead of passively taking it in. That's what I saw from my experience. I saw motivated students who really wanted to challenge what they were being told. I, I, you could tell them something. And they could ask you. Now, with that use of modern technology, they have the power, the privilege to ask you, why? How? How does it work? Is it true? Can I try? Can I test it? Even if you're wrong, and I'm sure that there's another way. If you stop the flow of, um, uh, if you stop the flow of a river, it stagnates. And if you stop the... If you stop the flow of information to bright young minds, they like we stagnate. And this is one of the many things that really helps break that cycle 
it really helps these minds not stagnate. It helps their flow of critical thinking and their willingness and their passion, their motivation to move on and to flow freely. And that is what we want. We want motivated students. The answer, of course, cannot be just to use more hardware in our classes or to just translate those courses and have them freely available. The answer is to combine the best attribute of what we can provide so that people can have a chance, at least a chance of having access to information that will make them better people, better professionals, and will help them learn more about what we're truly passionate about. So what would happen if we were to suddenly combine the passion, the incentive that comes with using hands-on, a hands-on approach to knowledge with the privilege of having the class being in the, of adapting, say, uh, one of these massive open online courses to the student's mother tongue. What if we were to combine the convenience, if I may put it that way, which is a necessity, actually, of translation with the natural effect of using a hands-on approach, we would get motivated students who have access to information. And it will be access to information that they care about and that they will want to learn and that they will do. I guarantee you that they will do everything in their power to learn as much as they can, to absorb as much of it as they can, like little sponges thrown into a puddle. Of course. That's not just that. We have to stop looking at technology strictly from a technical point of view. It's really, the essence of it is that it's a tool for us. It's a tool for the hypothetical or not students. It's a tool for everybody to really just try harder and go deeper and they can challenge what they know. They can challenge what they are being told. And if you have, if you combine both the incentive that stems from this, the incentive that stems from experience that will be provided through hands-on practice, a whole new world, if you combine that with information being readily available, then there's no stopping them. There is no stopping a motivated person who is given a chance. There is nothing more powerful than passion and hard work. And most people are willing to put in hard work in order to not see their dreams die. You see, if you browse on the internet and social media and you read an article you find interesting, there will be, more than likely, there will be a share button that will enable you to share this to all different kinds of social media. Is that right? Good. That's exactly what is happening. Information will be spread in more than one way, in more than one language. People will have access to what they want to know in a language that they understand. That way, you can tell and you can see for yourself that no piece of information will be an island. No discipline will be an island. No person, no student, no mind, and no man will be an island. And I hope that one day, this world, our world, will be that kind of, perhaps, perhaps a little utopia. Maybe it will get to that level. And then we can truly say, that no piece of information, that no privilege, that no man, that no mind is truly an island. Thank you.